Hey guys, the Loftinger for sure, as always, and welcome to the usual update video where I review the latest build of the game Heroes and Generals. The young build, named after US Brigadier Commander in Panama during World War II, I honestly don't know anything about this, the information is right off Wikipedia. But anyways, this is another medium-sized content update followed by the previous Islander build. There's nothing too eye candy or special about it, but there are a few changes and new features that could possibly make the game more interesting in the close future. I didn't really prepare a concrete script for this video, so I'm just going to talk about things from positive and negative viewpoints. First of all, new contents are always welcomed. We have decent amount of new items, starting with the new M1 carbine. This is, I think, the third variant to be introduced for the M1 family. Uh, this is for US tanker and paratrooper with only four slots. The first ever tier 3 SMG to be introduced to the game, uh, the PPS-43, obviously for the Soviets. And for the German faction, we also have the Kettenkrad. I'll most likely cover these new items in detail for another video, discussing whether they're really worth the grind and money compared to its previous tier alternatives, because just like always, um, these new weapons and vehicles are quite expensive. We also have a new map, followed by a new game mode, The Encounter. This is by default um, an infantry-only map where other assault team types can't be deployed by Matchmaker or the Generals, I think. I don't really know about how the General works, so you guys have to cover that by yourself. Uh, I'm happy to see a brand new map and a new game mode, but if you think about it, the Encounter is just a simple TDM with no special objectives, and the Depop map which I guess kind of looks good, but also feels like part of terrain cut out from the factory. I've said it countless times in my past videos, and I see a lot of other people complaining about it on the forum as well, but this whole autumn European suburb theme is really getting repetitive and boring to play in. We really want to see the destroyed city and urban environment with more indoor combat. I want to fight in the snow forest with a bunch of craters from artillery, or I want a place where my tank camouflage would actually work. Uh, maybe Africa Corps, I don't know. Without a change in theme or environment, it's really going to be hard for Rito to impress the players with their new maps. There's one thing I can rate positively though, which are the trenches. I've seen a post on the forum made by one of the dev members in the past that the Retox engine, their original game engine used for this game action side I think, had some issue with rendering underground low ground objects. And now that we see a proper full blown trench in this new depop map, maybe they'll be able to bring something more complicated um, underground complex in the future. It'll be pretty nice and awesome to play in one of the flak tower Germans built during the war, which one team defending and another team assaulting to destroy anti-air artilleries. There are also a few new additions on the general side of the game, but again, for me, um, I don't really play war or get involved in war campaigns, so I don't really know about those. Something about boosting the moral or uh, adding bonus for the soldiers who plays as the... Um, unpopulated faction. Uh, but in terms of action side, the final major change with the Young update is the ability to apply camouflage to your vehicles. We all knew this was at some point going to be introduced to the game seeing the uh, weapon skins are already in game. Uh, but now that it's finally here, I'm quite excited to finally control a vehicle that's not painted in pitch gray or green. Unfortunately, we still can't paint tanks nor planes but only trucks for each faction and the newly introduced tracked motorcycle. I'm glad that Rito isn't going for fancy pink and purple paint scheme and sticking with relatively realistic or I should say believable camouflage to keep the immersion factor up. I'm still hoping though that someday they'll let us modify the texture files and maybe I can make some historically accurate skins uh, that actually existed during the war. Unfortunately, I wish I could but I can't um, wrap up this video in a positive note. Um, I decided to include this because it, it, at least for me it seemed like a pretty big issue and I was surprised that there were only so few people complaining about it on the forum or feeling upset about it. 
Um, but apparently, Rito, um, after launching the prototype server where players could test out new stuff and report bugs pre-update, uh, they found a malware, um, Trojan to be exact, in their servers. It didn't affect players on Steam or on browser playing the live version, but whoever had prototype stable or the test plugin installed had a potential risk of getting the virus for a couple days. And me, I just installed the prototype server and I didn't touch it since then. But still, I had the Trojan virus uh, hidden inside the Heroes and Generals file. So I would actually recommend you guys to check um, or run a full scan to your computer, just in case. But you know, if, if you think about it, like... Why why isn't anyone upset? Like, I, I, I know that there are few people that were mad about it, um, but... Like, seeing Rito's stream, they were like, Oh, Shogunai, Shogunai is in Japanese is, uh... It's like, oh, it just happened, you know, nah, it happened. Like, I, I don't think they even apologized about it uh, on the stream or on the news page. Sorry if I'm mistaken. Uh, so, and, and it's this kind of stuff that kind of uh, dem demotes me, demotivates me from playing the game. I still love Heroes of Generals and Rito Moto. Um, they have been more than supportive to me uh, to keep this channel running in a way. I just hope this kind of stuff never happens again. Well, that's it for this video. Make sure to leave a comment with your opinion about this update and which weapon you want to see me use first to make a video. Uh, either PPS or the folded M1 carbine. Hope you guys enjoyed the video as always, and I'll see you guys in the next one.